Welcome to church in the middle of the summer, huh? <laughs> it's really been kind of warm out there uh, for everybody. But it is nice and comfortable in here, isn't it? I'm glad that you're here. And welcome to those of you who are joining us online for worship. I went online, I see that a bunch of you are out there, our regulars, and we're glad that you're here with us today. Um, I don't know, I didn't look to see if Barb Love is on there, but happy birthday, Barb. <laughs> we got it down that it's your birthday this week. This is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, and um, we have some beautiful texts to hear this day, this day, and I hope that they will support and strengthen you. Uh, my theme on my preaching today is hope, so I think that's a good theme, especially after some of the barn burners I've been giving you, huh? <laughs> All right, so here are some of the prayer requests within the community. Um, Karen's brother, um, you know that we've been praying for John, and um, his medication is doing its job, but um, he's kind of in a weakened state, so we're going to keep John in our prayers so that he can get stronger. Um, okay, now that the Melnicheks are here, Mackenzie's birthday. Are you celebrating this week? We did. You did already. Okay, yeah. That's a grandparent for you, always ahead of the game. Um, Jim Folk Road. Happy birthday to you. You're going to be 50 again, or 32, or 30 sounds good. We'll keep it. All right. And then we have James Nelson's birthday. And Doug, you've got a birthday coming up in your house with Dawn, right? 
is Don's birthday coming up? Yeah, he's like, oh yeah, I better remember to go get a card. Good thing I came to church. Okay. <laughs> Good thing Jim prints it in the bulletin so you remember. Hey, listen, you know, Doug, I've been getting folks who've told me what beautiful letters that you send out um, as kindnesses into the community. So thank you for your care of our community. God bless you in those beautiful cards that you send. Um, I think it was Mrs. Parthamore who told me that you sent her something, and that she loves it. So, uh, Sandra has been in the hospital and is now home and recovering after a pacemaker has been added into that body. So, God bless you, Sandra, in your healing. And you know what? She's just as strong as before. Like, you could tell this woman is a fierce warrior of a person, and she just loves her family and all of us so much. So greetings to you, Miss Sandra. Also in the hospital this week, um, Joanne Painter. She is still in the hospital, um, and she had a fall in the tub. So we're going to keep Joanne in our prayers, and Anita is doing well following a, a visit down for some more care in Baltimore, and I want to thank Tom for taking her down there. I guess that was a bit of a ride down there, wasn't it? It wasn't so bad. It wasn't in the city, so that was very kind of you to take some time and drive her on your, in your first weeks of uh, retirement. <laughs> God bless you, and thank you for caring for the two of them, uh, because they are in a pretty weakened state, so if you have the time and the ability to reach out um, to Joanne and Anita in your, um, whenever you've got a minute, they will love having a chance to chat with you and catch up. All right, here are some other prayer requests. We're going to pray for Dennis Nace, who had a pretty severe heart attack this week, um, uh, right, after, right before retirement. So this is a co-worker of Jim's, and we're going to keep Dennis in our prayers. And Barb Blair as well, um, for her health. Billy Osenbach is still in the hospital and coming home, hopefully. So we're going to keep Bill in our prayers again. And then we keep... Jean Wiest and our Wiester. Okay, sorry, I keep writing that down wrong. Jean Wiester in our prayers, and of course, Pam Murray. Were there other prayer requests that I didn't get because you're just walking in? All right. If not, um, greetings to those of you who are joining us online for worship today. If you don't have a bulletin, just follow along. You know what to do. Um, it's good to hear. We have three of our ladies from um, the quilters that are on a road trip. So we're going to pray for their safety as they make their way around and everybody else who's traveling as well. If there are, are there any other announcements that need to be shared with the community? Yes, uh, Jean, would you like to share something with us? So we're waiting on the building permit, and that's from a third party outside of the borough that they've kind of employed to look into that. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Handicap parking will be kept from being used because of the dumpster from uh, the roof debris. Thank you. Thanks for that announcement so we know. And we should probably be watching for anything coming down from up there if we're around the building, huh? <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> All right, thank you for those announcements. And I do know that folks have been donating to the roof fund. 
Um, and we're grateful for everybody who would like to do that. If you would like to make a special donation for the roof fund, there are green envelopes that you can just write roof fund and um, put your offering in addition for that. Okay. Are those all the announcements? Great. Thank you so much for, um, for sharing those. Let us stand together as we come before God, making the sign of the cross and preparing our hearts for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. We'll take a moment. You may kneel or stand or be seated as you're most comfortable as you speak to God about those things that are heaviest and weighing upon your heart. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll stand together and sing my Lord of Light. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we hear the word of God. First reading is from Zechariah, ninth chapter. 
Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. The word of the Lord. second reading is from Romans chapter 7. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I, not do, I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord.
Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It's like the children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. All right, some of you will recognize this. Oops, there goes another rubber tree. Oops, there goes another rubber tree. Oops, there goes another rubber tree plant. <laughs> For he's got high hopes. He's got high hopes. He's got high apple pie in the sky. Hopes. You know it. <laughs> it's one of those songs. That became famous, I think it was, um, who was it that sang that song? Frank Sinatra, thank you for the call out, that's very helpful. Yeah, Frank made that one very popular. It's a song about a little ant who's trying to move a rubber tree plant, which of course is like a bazillion times heavier than he is, and yet this little ant has, <laughs> nothing's going to stop him from that little plant, and oops, there goes another rubber tree, because he's made it, he's made it, okay. High Hopes is a song about not giving up, about watching an ant move a rubber tree plant. I remember hearing this song as a young person and being encouraged not to give up, even in the, in the midst of adversity when things look impossible. The world can get us down, really down. It can give you grief when you're doing well and even when you're failing to live up to your potential. No matter what's going on, this world can make you feel crappy. It really has a good capability of doing that. Jesus, as we're hearing in our text today, begins to complain in chapter 11 that prophets are scorned and even called, you know, you're full of demons uh, when they don't eat and drink the things that they aren't supposed to. You know, John went around being like the perfect little prophet, and they said, oh, he's filled with demons. Then Jesus comes along and he's like, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to drink a little, turn water to wine, have a little party, live a little bit. And what do they call him? A drunkard and a glutton. And he's sitting around with the wrong kinds of people. Doesn't he know a religious leader is supposed to be above reproach and sitting with only the right people? Have you ever felt this kind of discouragement in your own life? Where... I can't use the phrase, but there's a good phrase where you're mm if you do and you're mm if you don't, right? You got trouble either way. Jesus lifts to the surface this truth in his speech here. And then we hear him pray a prayer of thanks to God about God's ways not being like that, where you're always in trouble no matter what you do. He reveals that God's ways seem to be a mystery to the most intelligent people. God's ways are like that hard to fathom that maybe an infant gets it. Hello, the infants know, is what Jesus is saying in his prayer. 
God's ways are not that mysterious. God's ways are to loosen us from that grip of constant angst. The judgment, the mocking, the constant demands in a system that just will not let up. Jesus is like, let that stuff go. Jesus then calls the people that he's talking to, come to me. You who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to say, yep, I think that's everybody in the crowd. We're all carrying something. Those shoulders are like <laughs> ready to let go of something. And he says, come to me and I will give you rest. Like bone, soul, weary, rest and recovery. Are you longing for some rest? Would it be okay to let down your guard for a few minutes or more and not worry? Would that be all right to let that stuff go for a minute? If you're longing for rest, then let's, let's, let's hear this stuff. At the waters of baptism, we are called into refreshment. Every time you are somewhere near water in the coming days, Think about this refreshment that Jesus offers us. It's been a hot summer. I mean, that was the first opening lines here from me this morning. As I remember just being outside, even just running errands. You walk in and out and go like, whew, I've been in a bath. The cool waters of baptism are calling us to come and be cooled down internally. To remember that we can let go of the as we put it these days, the hot mess that we find ourselves in, where we live much of the time. As you touch water next, recall the internal refreshment that God offers. Remember that God's ways are to unbind us from that knot that's in our guts and the pain that says that there's no way out of the mess that I'm in. God promises to bear us up in those places and to cool our hearts and our minds down in the frenzy and the fear of whatever situation that makes us wonder what this life is all about. I see you sitting in the hospital. <laughs> I know that there are some of you joining us online from that very place. When you get into that moment, if you can get some water near you, take some and call upon God's name. People say, oh, I need some holy water. You can make holy water. I'm telling you, it's just as simple as taking water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Holy water. Say a simple prayer of thanks to God for that water. The water that, you know, the doctors are telling us, you need a half gallon every day. That stuff the stuff that we need for life. And give thanks to God for the love that comes with that fresh drinking water. Say a prayer for the simple gift of life and God's love as you drink it. See if you can experience in that next drink the grace of the moment. This world can certainly bind us up for sure, but Paul tells us a secret that you read so beautifully today. Thank you, Linda. In Romans chapter 7, we hear the familiar words that we are like slaves to sin. And we just can't help going back to it. Every time I think I got it, I return right back to it. He tells us we don't understand our own actions. Anybody know that about themselves? Yeah, we don't do what we want, but we do the very thing we hate. Oh, all it takes is one person to trigger me, and I'm ready to go right there. You know what I mean? Like, I know, keep a cool head, calm down, and yet internally I'm raring, right, to go right there. He tells us that this is like a law at work in, within us. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it, says Paul. And again, I find this is such right on the mark in so many aspects. 
I can will myself to do the right things, but when I'm triggered, I fall right back into the old traps. I'm human, says Paul, and that's true for you too. I mean, any of you not human? All right. We are all struggling, every person on this earth, with various troubles in life. Even if somebody looks like they've got it all together and they don't have a care in the world, I'm telling you that's a lie. Life sends troubles to every life. The God, the people of God, are living testimonies to this reality. That's what our Bible is full of. Not perfect people, but real scoundrels. It even shows us that whole communities have horrible times. This happens, things happen, big things happen that are outside of our control. Despite the fact that, like, Paul is like, I do what I can't do, there are bigger things at work in this world. It's bad enough that we struggle with our own selves, like Paul tells us, or with others who are judging us and make life difficult, like Jesus talks about. But when the whole world we live in is a place that becomes dangerous, that just brings things to a new level of trouble. In ancient times, large groups of people would swallow up smaller groups of people, smaller nations that could not defend themselves enough to remain free. This was true of Jesus' family line, also known as the Jews. Before Jesus was born, the Jewish tribes lived closely together. Of course, they squabbled and disagreed. That's what people do. But when others came, a large force called the Assyrians, followed by the next wave of a force called the Babylonians, when they came and just slaughtered people, families, and stole children and women and occupied the lands, that's real shock. And then slavery as well. There were real fears that God had abandoned them. And after the return, after they came back from all those Assyrian and Babylonians, back to the lands where Jesus lived and was born into, the prophet Isaiah, or Zechariah, excuse me, pronounces the words that we heard from you today out of God's mouth. Return to your stronghold, says God. O oh, prisoners of hope, Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Oh, what a mighty God. Come and find rest, you who have high hope. You prisoners of hope. You wouldn't let it go, you wouldn't let me go. You're like the ant with a rubber tree plant. You're prisoners of hope. You have high hope, high apple pie in the sky hope. There's nothing to draw you from that freedom to hope in the midst of the worst, darkest places, says, says Zechariah. Do you know what Zechariah's name means? God remembers. God remembers. What a name for a time when a people feel forgotten and lost. Returning from a time of disaster into a time of restoration. God remembers Zechariah. Jesus ultimately reveals the restoration in his own body. At the cross, he experienced the same kind of moment that his people had experienced long before he was born. A time of desolation, a time of abandonment, and excruciating loss and pain and death. But like the ant, nothing would stop him from doing the impossible. He raises from the dead and promises that this is for us too. You think it's impossible, and yet there is life after death. Your hope in God is not in vain, for God remembers Zechariah. God understands what we're going through internally 
externally <laughs> in a world. And Jesus shows up to confirm that God remembers. And then he calls us, come. Just skip out on all them megalomaniacs who think they know how to run this frickin' world. The wise ones that you keep turning to. Come like an infant to me. What does an infant do but trust? They can't do nothing for themselves except trust. He says, come to me, you infants who are longing for some just water, food to eat, and rest. And I will give you rest. I will make you refreshed. If you're out there, you people who are at the beach today, <laughs> Step into that beautiful water. For those of you who are getting to go back to a pool or somewhere refreshing today, step in that water. And if you're just like me, grab a glass of water out of the tap. Hold it and recall God's tremendous gift, even in the most common moments of the day. God's going with you. God remembers you and calls you to rest. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the most common elements like water that remind us that you are ever with us, ever present. Like our bodies are what, 70% water or something? So you're like always with us like that commonly uh, as water is within our bodies. We can't live without it. We can't live without you either. And we're grateful for your constant reminder to come and find rest in you, to lay down all those things that we internally fight, or that the world continues to pour upon us. Let us hand those things over to you at the communion rail. Let's just say we'll lay them there at the altar and collect up from you the things that we need for the day. Bread and wine, water and blessing, and a reminder that you remember us. In a world that just has us as numbers, you know how many hairs are on our head. We thank you, Lord, for knowing us and loving us that much. Help us to be kind and gentle with others as you are with us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So we have a song. It is called, Earth is Full of Wit and wisdom. Let us stand together and sing.
the title. <laughs> Great little song, love it. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. God of the covenant, you call ministers to proclaim your gospel of grace throughout the world. Inspire pastors, deacons, church musicians, and all ministers of your word. As they carry out your work, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all creation, you reveal your goodness through all that you have made. Rivers and seas, plants and animals, endangered species. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, botanical gardens, zoos, and wildlife sanctuaries. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire that all peoples of the world live in peace. Guide government leaders at all levels, national, state, and province, and local, to work for justice, mercy, and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you bring healing to those who are sick, consolation to those who are grieving, and well-being to those who are distraught. Send skilled caregivers to all in need, for those whom we pray today especially. We include Peggy Warmkessel, Anita and Joanne Painter, Hannah, Karen Kaler, Woody Isher, Trudy Stum, Loie Parker, Steve Nock, Judy Hunt, Edsel, Debbie Aldridge, the Holden family, Anna, Kathy Miller, Marty Pano, Jenny's mom and her sister, Marty and Paul Sheffer, Ken, Judy Smith and her family, Bob and Maggie Fogelman, Gladys, Sonia, Jeff and Jody Rice, Marie, Lucy, John, Dennis, Barb, Billy Osenbach, Jean Weister, Pam Murray, and we lift before you, Lord God, in gratitude for these lives in our community as they celebrate a birthday. For Mackenzie and Barb Love, for Jim Folkroad and James Nelson, and Don Morris, and all those who are celebrating anniversaries or other events that are so important to us. We also lift before you those who are serving in the military Make your presence known among all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of rejoicing, you've brought us together this day for worship around the word and sacrament. Encourage children in their learning and growing and watch over those who are absent today. Lead us all to places of renewal and refreshment. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of all faithfulness, through the witness of the faithful departed, you reveal your love in action. Embolden us by their example to build up the beloved community in all the contexts we encounter. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another. Those of you who are online today, please do say peace be with you. I'm so glad to see you're here today. I see you. I know that you're out there. <laughs> God bless you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. O oh, Lamb of God, you take of all the world away. You suffered our lives to save. Have mercy now, we pray. O oh, Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world.
God of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless and keep and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Jesus is my plea. Deliver. 